Come here, Tug. Put a little serotonin in me. Put me here like this. Put a little serotonin in me. Write that script. Put a little serotonin in me. See the pharmacist. Little more serotonin in me. What you twerking with? Put a little serotonin in me. Nurses hips. Little more serotonin in me. No insurance for me. A lot of more serotonin in me. Just web empty. I'm bringing Paxil back. G'day, Jay Wolf. My name is Nervous Neuron. I'm marketing consultant for Pfizer Inc. Manufacturers of Zoloft Sertralini tablets. And I hear you have a bit, um, a bit of a beef with our product. Just joking, um, nervous neuron. I am but a mere behavioural neuroscience student. And I just thought I'd uh, take up Jay Wolf's challenge of a little debate on the um, topic psychiatry is bullshit. Anyway, it'll be, uh, before watching this video, it'll be recommended for you to check out uh, Jay Wolf's videos, um, Psychiatry is Bullshit. One, two, three and four are not essential, but is recommended. This debate particularly um, interests me because I have um, quite an interest in the biological basis of mood and anxiety disorders. So I thought, what a beautiful time to wank and to um, explain some of that, since Jay, would, Jay Wolf would love to hear some of that scientific evidence. Mmm, science. Jay makes several arguments against psychiatry in his videos, and some of them are quite good, but I'm mainly going to be talking about the ones I disagree with and why. Um, one of his main contentions is that depression is not a physical illness, there are no biological markers, and neither is any other mental disorder. So be, um, I'll have to talk about what is a mental disorder for that, and then I'll have to explain the biological markers of depression. There was also a lot of talk about what's normal, and I think um, it's important to clarify uh, a definition of normality and more importantly, abnormality. Firstly, we have statistical abnormality. Here we have a standard bell-shaped curve, curve or a normality curve. Here we have a, a mean of some um, value. This is a graph of the population. Um, and this is sort of a frequency curve. And what abnormality basically is, is a value that's more than uh, three standard deviations away from the mean. So that works well because um, depressed people would lie in here, for example. Now, depression isn't that common. But this has um, faults as well. This has faults, though, because if we use this as a measure of sort of um, mental illness, um, people with a very high IQ are here, and they'd be deemed mentally ill. Anyway, um, statistical sort of measures are used mainly in the scientific studies. But um, there's also distress as an indicator of abnormality. If a person is distressed, then it's abnormal. But that's also a problem in mental illness because um, with for example, delusions, they are unaware of, um, of their state, that's abnormal. You could say um, maladaptive is a good one, you know, if um, delusions, again, is not adaptive to survival. But then again, so is something like abstinence from sex, that's not adaptive to life, no reproduction, no passing on the genes. And then there could be violating society standards. Um, society doesn't find sort of hallucinations and delusions acceptable. But then again, criticising that, um, it's dependent on society. And again, you know, mental illness here might not be a mental illness in Japan. One theme in the behavioural sciences such as neuroscience, psychiatry, psychology, etc. is to administer a battery of tests. So your um, hypothesis has to pass several different tests. And um, for mental illness in this case, it would have to be statistically abnormal, cause distress, maladaptive and violate society. 
and it has to be sort of most of them but not all of them and it's all up to sort of critical analysis and thinking about it yourself. So, for example, hallucinations may be statistically abnormal, maladaptive and violate society standards, but they may not cause distress to the patient. Now, before I move three standard deviations away from my main point, I'll say that um, the same sort of thing applies not only for mental illness, as you like to call them, and um, for physical um, illness as well, such as diabetes itself, that's, that can go through the same test. Cancer, AIDS, um, Tourette's, in, oh, that's mental, um, Parkinson's disease, etc. Mental illness, cognitive dysfunction, emotional dis, um, disability, behavioural disorder, psychopathology, same sort of thing. But um, it's pretty brave to assume all 374 illnesses listed in the DSM IV 4th edition text revised have no physiological basis to them. Trust me, they do. The problem is um, they are, a lot of them aren't known and that's where you're right. We don't know exactly why. But I think we definitely know more than um, you think we know, anyway. Um, and the problem is there's a lot of conflicting evidence, especially um, with depression. I'll talk about that in a minute. Dementia. You have a grandma, she's acting a little bit senile. Is it just old age or is she mentally ill? And is there biological markers for it? Of course there is! but you don't know until she's dead and you can do an autopsy. It's pretty easy to diagnose somebody with a dementia. It's basic cognitive decline. It comes across in many um, sort of tests. And um, the problem is differentially diagnosing the different types of dementias because they all have different organic causes and because of this they require different treatments. And you don't know which one's which until we can actually have the brain and do histological examination on the cells under the microscope. Okay, let's compare Alzheimer's disease and Lewy body's dementia. Alzheimer's, uh, typical dementia, a um, lot of cognitive decline, um, damage to executive functions, etc. And that makes sense because there's damage to the sort of um, the cortex of the brain, you know, the outside, which is sort of all the kind of um, executive functions, planning, etc. In the, um, the frontal part and the kind of memory areas, and as well as the hippocampus. What happens is these things called amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles. I can't say it kind of aggregate, aggregate inside the nerve cell. Nerve cell dies and um, as a result there's atrophy of um, the cortex and you can see if you take a brain scan that um, there's you know brain volume missing. Lewy body's dementia is the same sort of thing except instead of um, amyloid plaques you have these things called Lewy bodies. Lewy bodies are basically <coughs> misfolded proteins called alpha synuclein and also they have aggregates of other proteins attached to them. One of them is called um, ubiquitin and what ubiquitin does is it marks a protein for destruction. So it's a little messenger protein and they, um, when something is polyubiquitinated, um, a sort of a protein munching machine comes and destroys it that doesn't happen, it all sort of turns into one big tangle and it severely damages the nerve cells. 